guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Yes, the funny Italian man game is making its debut on this series here, and boy, is there a lot to talk about. Being a big fan of the Wario Land games that Pizza Tower drew a bunch of inspiration from, I basically instantly found myself enjoying sending Peppino Spaghetti here through the various wacky levels throughout the game. Anyways, Pizza Tower has had quite a long development history, and as such, there is a whole ton of content that has been added or removed over the years. So much so that I'll definitely have to split this game into parts. So if you're interested in seeing more of this game on the channel, be sure to let me and Peppino know with a like down below. For this video though, I'll be mostly focusing on the final release version of the game, and more specifically on various scrapped mechanics, graphics, and more. So grab a slice of pizza, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, so to kick things off here, something that some of you might not know yet if you didn't play any of the pre-release demo builds of this game, is that originally there was going to be a few more playable characters in Pizza Tower than just Peppino and Gustavo for those two levels or whatever. And these playable characters are actually three of the bosses that you encounter in the game, with each of them being referenced by a single letter in the game's code. V for Vigilante, N for The Noise, and Pepperman is referenced as M, actually, since P is already taken by Peppino. What's awesome, though, is that by fiddling around with the game's coding, remnants of these playable characters can actually be reinstated into the game. You can essentially swap Peppino's animations for the corresponding ones for each other playable character, and you can also basically re-implement their moveset and characteristics, too. Pepperman is the least developed of these characters, as apparently the plans to scrap him being playable was made much earlier on in development. Now apparently, he was only planned to have been playable in the Refrigerator, Refrigerador, Freezerator level, and what remains of his moveset is really basic. He can dash left and right, ground pound, as well as taunt, but only mid-air for some reason. So yeah, his moveset is quite limited, making it pretty difficult to play through the game in this current state. Pepperman is also the only one of these playable characters that was never even playable in any build released to the public. Then next is the Vigilante, who would have been able to use his gun against enemies instead of Peppino's dash attack, and would have also had his iconic rollout move. Now one interesting quirk about the Vigilante is that when dashing, his speed caps out at Mach 3, and as such, he isn't able to break through the metal blocks seen in the game. To combat this, he was intended to have been able to use his dynamite attack that's seen in the boss fight to break these. However, this move was coded for using a fourth button or key input which was removed from the game, and as such, this move can't really be used so any stages with metal blocks aren't exactly playable with the Vigilante. Furthermore, he also can't use any of Peppino's transformations, so any stages that require those are also a wash. The Vigilante is also unique from the rest of the characters in the fact that unlike every other character who can't die from taking damage, he actually does have a health system coded in for him. The default starting value is 100 hit points, taking damage would take away 25 HP, and health was to be recovered by collecting pizza toppings throughout a level with the mini ones recovering 1 HP, and the bigger ones would recover 20. It sounds like an interesting mechanic, but I must say, in the spirit of the Wario Land games, I much prefer there to not be a health system. And finally, the last of the unused playable characters is the Noise. Now whereas Pepperman is the least developed playable character, the Noise is basically the opposite as he was playable in the game for years during its development demos up until around mid-2022. Although when re-implemented into the game now, his moveset matches Peppino for reasons we'll get to in a bit, in earlier points in developing this game, he actually had his own unique moveset including using a jetpack, being able to bounce around using his pogo stick, and more. Although it's not 100% clear why all of these characters were only kept as bosses and their playable aspects removed, the main developer of the game, McPig, had stated that he didn't really want half of the playable characters to be restricted, I assume in terms of their movesets, so I guess in order to keep the level experience uniform across the board, the decision to keep the baseline moveset was chosen. And this philosophy was especially seen in how the moveset of the noise was changed. I alluded to it a bit earlier, but probably the main reason for the moveset change is that there's actually a whole two-player co-op mode for the game that was scrapped. 
In this multiplayer mode, players could either help each other out to clear a stage or grief each other if they were feeling a bit more competitive, with each player striving to get a higher score. And yeah, in order for both players to be on even playing grounds with neither having any advantages or disadvantages, the decision to create moveset parity regardless of which character was chosen was made, and as such, the noise had his moveset altered. Now I think a multiplayer aspect to this game would be awesome, so I'm really hoping that one day something like this does get implemented, but I'm sure based on how fast this game is, it might be tough to implement unless each player would have their own screen. Interestingly enough though, there are still some remnants of this mode left in the game, but unfortunately they aren't exactly complete. Far from it in fact. And this co-op mode isn't the only mode that didn't make it into the final game, as there's also a hard mode for Pizza Tower that was scrapped. And unlike the co-op mode we just went over, this hard mode is found much more complete, and in fact is actually really easy to re-enable in the game to boot. Basically, all you have to do is enable the debug command in the Steam launch options, press F5 to open the command window in game, and then simply type in hard mode true, and that's it, the hard mode is now re enabled. Anyways, as you've been seeing, the main gimmick that hard mode would enable is the introduction of another scrapped character, Snick EXE, who is definitely not a parody of anything else. In this hard mode, Snick will basically be an extra annoyance and will throw down enemies to try and mess you up. Now the extra problem is that you actually don't want to defeat any of the enemies thrown down by Snick, as for every two that are defeated, this also scrapped heat meter here will also go up. And once maxed out, Snick can spawn up to four enemies at a time, and it isn't until you take damage that the meter will go back down to zero. It's a cool little extra mode that I think could have offered a bit of extra challenge to those that are absolutely crazy at this game like some of the top speedrunners are. And speaking of the heat meter, now's a good time to dive a bit deeper into it. Although it did make its way into this hard mode as we discussed, this actually wasn't the original way it was intended to work. Instead of being tied to Snick throwing down enemies, it was instead once a big part in a level's progression as you would increase the heat meter the more enemies that you would defeat. And as the meter increased, different effects would be triggered, enemies would start to move faster, and then ultimately there would have been a rage mode where enemies would unleash new unique moves that they otherwise wouldn't ever use. Similar to the combo system that is seen in the final game, the goal was to keep killing more enemies as fast as possible to get a higher score, while also avoiding taking damage. Now feelings around this heat meter were apparently pretty divided with some fans not really feeling it was a good addition, and as such, over time the mechanic of introducing exclusive moves was cut, and the heat meter would only allow for extra score until ultimately the mechanic was completely removed. Well, at least in terms of normal gameplay, as there are still several otherwise unused graphics for the heat meter left over in the game. These include the meter and internal red bar, a color palette showing how the colors would change as the temperature increased from cool to hot, as well as a TV graphic for Peppino for once he had reached a certain heat level, which can actually still be loaded into the game. And this actually isn't the first iteration of the heat meter either, as there are even earlier assets for it left over in the game too. The first known version was seen like how it is left over in the hard mode, a dial with four pizza faces with expressions ranging from happy all the way to absolutely enraged. We can also see that there were once plans to mirror the pizza faces, and there were also ideas for different effects on the meter itself too. Then another iteration for this heat meter idea was instead named Style Bar, and for this, thought bubbles would have appeared above Peppino's face in the heads up display, from mild to antsy to mad, and then finally the maximum level, crazy. And furthermore, there are also several additional graphics for combos associated with the Style Bar as they are referred to in the code as Style Pizza. These include several graphics that would have appeared under the TV heads up display graphic and each multiplier would result in a different pizza type. Pizza Pizza, OK Pizza, Super Pizza, and finally Devil Pizza. And then lastly, there's yet another iteration of these multiplier graphics and here we can see them describing the multiplier. Cheesy would have been a basic 1x multiplier, mildly spicy would double, 
Then there's stupid, not bad, but not hot dog. And finally, of course, hot dog, which would have offered a whopping 16 times multiplier. It seems like there were a bunch of really cool ideas for this meter, but it looks like to keep things simple, the more basic combo meter that we got is what the developers had settled on keeping as the method of increasing score for defeating enemies. Now before we move on, if you're enjoying the content and would like to help support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. It really helps me out a bunch and you'll also get some really nifty channel perks to boot. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways, next let's switch gears and talk about the numerous unused graphics that are left over even in the current release of the game. And here I first want to start with some of the most basic looking graphics as they're basically just concept sketches. And these are for several scrapped attacks as well as phases for the final boss in the game, Pizza Head. For starters, there are some early sketches of Pizza Head looking down, extending his arm to grab something beneath a level, and then grabbing a spicy picture of himself before shoving it back down as he does in his battle. And then there's also this sketch of him seemingly throwing something, presumably the crate with the gun as is also featured in the fight. Now one sketch that reveals something a bit different is that here we can see that once Pizza Face was defeated, initially the idea was to see Pizza Head controlling it instead of him just sitting on the throne as he ultimately ended up doing. Then next there's also this early sketch of Pizza Head jumping out of Pizza Face instead of just getting launched upwards as is seen in the final game. Oh, and we're just getting started here as there are a whole bunch more early sketch graphics of Pizza Lad over here. Next are several sketches of some unused attacks meant for the second phase of fighting Pizza Head. These include him appearing in a musketeer getup, him being apparently shocked after throwing a portrait of some sorts. There's actually a whole animation left over of Pizza Head opening up a present which would have resulted in a backwards boxing glove spring attack. There's a scrapped attack in which Pizza Head would carry and drop a large bomb before then running away from it. And then there's also some sort of scrapped attack where he would have pulled up a derpy looking rat and just ate it. Yeah. Now lastly for these sketches, there are several that appear to reveal a third phase in the fight against Pizza Head that was cut. Originally, apparently the fight wasn't going to consist of the gauntlet of fighting previous bosses encountered in the game, especially considering they were probably still going to be playable characters at this point and not just bosses. And instead of this, there would have been a final phase where Pizza Head would become enraged and would have had some new moves to utilize. These include a dash punch or dash face slam into the ground move, him screaming get out at Pepino, a spinning punch and spinning kick attack, a punch with a giant arm as well as a kick where his leg would seemingly extend a great distance. Now apparently, according to the devs, they wanted to keep Pizza Head's image as being a goofy clown and not a crazed fella. So yeah, I guess they decided to remove this third phase and slipped in refighting the prior bosses instead. I think it's too bad because I felt like the final phase of fighting Pizza Head was a bit underwhelming. Now next up, although moving away from the concept sketches, the next graphics all still look quite unfinished. First, there are several placeholder graphics that are left over from an old Patreon exclusive demo of the game. Since at the time there weren't proper graphics for displaying a rank or level name, these placeholders were implemented to display the level name, a title of sorts of the area, as well as a placeholder graphic for the lack of score and rank for a level. Considering how far away this demo was from the release of the game, it's pretty wild to see that these are still kicking around in the game's files. Then next up, there are several black and white placeholder sprites of Peppino as well as the noise meant for the cutscene where the balloon slams into the background during the transition to the second phase of the fight. Here we can see the duo looking worried, screaming, and then once again looking, uh, quite concerned. Moving on, there are these four early versions of the cards seen in the fast food salon level as well as several graphics for the heads-up display that went unused, including graphics that would actually show your speed level, a slot that would indicate if you had a key in your inventory, a scrapped reload timer that would have appeared as a pizza and would indicate how long you had to wait in between shotgun blasts, as well as a graphic for it completing, and there's also a scrapped monitor, which would have seemingly indicated that you had a backup shotgun. 
This appears to show a scrapped mechanic where you could either hold different weapons at the same time, or that there would have been a chance that you could lose a weapon in some way. And lastly, there are two more bouncing HUD graphics that were scrapped, a bullet supposedly for an ammo counter, as well as this jerry can that would have been used for some fuel mechanic in the game. Now next, there are a plethora of early and unused animations for the heads of the Vigilante, the Noise, as well as Peppino. Similar to how the monitor heads-up display system works for Peppino in the final game, these are a leftover from earlier demo builds where just the head of the character you were playing as would appear on screen and would change depending on what occurs in gameplay. For the Vigilante, he's got an idle animation, one for taking damage, one for healing by collecting toppings as we went over earlier, one for speeding up, taking out enemies, as well as one meant to be seen during pizza time. Then for the noise, I guess being more of a fleshed out playable character at the time, he's got a lot more of these and there's everything from idle to getting and using the knight transformation, running at Mach 1, 2, 3, and 4, one for holding a bomb and getting blasted by one, taking damage, unlocking a door, ground pounding, taking out enemies, being low on health, being angry, as well as one apparently meant for taking the lead in the scrapped co-op mode. And finally, we of course have Peppino himself, who for some reason for these files has his name misspelled. For these, Peppino largely has animations for the same situations as the noise we just went over, but additionally, he also has one for rolling as well. Although Peppino still had a default white shirt and hat in earlier builds, interestingly in these, as you can see, he's seen in his yellow attire. Then, also left over in the game, are graphics for this old pause screen which would have featured only three options, each with a different Peppino facial expression, continuing, retrying a level, as well as returning back to the title screen. Next up, Captain Pizza Goblin, as seen in the Crust Cove stage, originally had a much different design. He looked much more human-like and had a red tricorn hat instead of the black skull one that the final design uses, he would yell fire, seemingly after every shot, which I could see getting annoying. And then lastly, there's also this unused ending animation for when a player would clear the section that he's seen in, where his own cannon would explode on him, which I think is much better than the animation that was used in the final cut. Next up, we got a pair of unused animations for the old design of Pillar John. Now you might have seen this old design if you found the old tower secret in the first floor of the game. I think these little secrets are awesome as they show off a bunch of early and unused concepts, most of which we'll dive into a potential future video, but for now our focus is on this guy. The first leftover unused animation for Mr. Pillar here is one in which he is seen opening his mouth. And this is actually from an also scrapped mechanic in which before bashing him to activate pizza time was even a thing and pizza toppings were to be used for progressing to the floor boss, the player would have instead had to feed John Pillar all five toppins within a level to proceed. And after feeding him all five toppins, he would give the player a nice grin, and this is also an animation that's still left over in the final game too. And while on the topic of scrapped mechanics, next up we have this screen that would have been used after beating the game. Instead of being given a completion rank which you could improve by going back and finding more secrets and such, Originally, once you had beaten the game, as you see in this graphic, your judgment would have been final, and you couldn't do anything to improve your judgment other than to delete the save or just start another one. I think this would have been a bit excessive, and probably would have turned off many players from trying again, so I'm glad this change was made. And now, last up for this video, there are several sprites of either early versions of Peppino's transformations, or some that never got to fully see the light of day. Originally seen in the credits for a 2018 demo build of the game, there were basically teasers of upcoming transformations that were planned to be added. For those that did end up getting implemented, we got early transformation graphics for the cheese and cheese ball, barrel, as well as pizza box. And then for the transformations that didn't quite make the cut, some spinning transformation that would make Peppino seemingly get sick, one where he would become red, one where he would seemingly run fast, one where he would get drunk or something, and this seems to have taken inspiration from Wario Land's Crazy Wario, 
there's some sort of transformation where Peppino would become green with a red nose, a transformation where Peppino would get absolutely jacked, one where he would become Swiss cheese or something, and finally one where he would become some sort of superhero. Again, likely taking inspiration from Wario's Wario Man, but it obviously also bears resemblance to the Noises get up, so my speculation is that maybe this would have swapped Peppino's moveset to the Noises back when it was still different. Although I am certainly a big fan of the designs and range of all the different transformations that were implemented in the game, I still can't help but feel a bit disappointed that we didn't get at least a few more of these, but I guess ultimately they may not have worked in the game with how the devs had intended. Anyways, we'll wrap it up here for this video, but that's certainly not it for this game's unused content. Not even close. Like I said, as long as you guys have interest in these videos and keep crushing that like button below, you can expect follow-ups as we have a bunch of really cool stuff to go through, including unused enemies, rooms, and more. Till then, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.